I was able to use all that pain, sadness, and everything into my work, mm -hmm. you know? And I hope you guys can see that in my new movies that's coming out. For sure. Mm, damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here! What up, what up, man? It's your boy Shot. Shot vs. A Bite Podcast, episode 200. Yeah, that's right. We reached 200, man. <laughs> Finally. But uh, we got a special guest in the building. And this is her first interview ever. So you already know this gonna she gonna blow up even more than what she is, you know what I'm saying? But we got uh actress, we got mother. She playing in movies such as uh Healing Walls, the Lawnmore Man, uh Moet. She was going crazy in that movie. <laughs> and um you got some movies coming up soon, uh, The Pure Tutor. Yep. And um, Vengeance. Yep. We got one of the Detroit top actresses. We got uh, Tamia Janae. Aww. What's going on? Well, first off, I want to say thank you so much for having me on. For sure, for sure. Number 200, like, that's my number, so yeah. I am so grateful and thankful to be here tonight. For sure, so. for sure. Now, first time, I actually, I never met you, but I ran into you mm -hmm. because your darts had the audacity to beat my team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Both games. And mm -hmm. in the back, you know, say shout out mm -hmm. to them and the Lady Ballers. Shout out to Lady Ballers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this, this that was actually my first um my first time coaching summer basketball. So, oh, yeah, y'all gave us a good introduction. So Well, yeah, you had a good team, too. For sure. Even though we beat y'all, yeah, you know. Yeah. That's cool. We see him again. We running back. <laughs> we running back. <laughs> but we start off every uh episode with Salumi while I'm here. Okay. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away before we give them their flowers. Uh, but it can't be an easy answer. It can't be, excuse me, uh, kids, mother, father, relationships. It got to be somebody out there, easy answer. So you got somebody you want to go ahead and show some love to? Ooh. I have a lot of people, though. Go ahead. You can name multiple. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I got to give uh, flowers to my sis, Monroe Elise. Mm -hmm. Um. Like, she's always there for me, mm -hmm. you know, um, always, whenever I'm feeling doubtful or whatever, she's there for me. And, you mm -hmm. know, last year for my birthday, she drove here from D.C. Okay. Just to take me out to dinner for my birthday. So, sure. shout and out I to her. by myself. So, shout out to you, mm -hmm. Mauro. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to, oh my goodness, see, I'm all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, Move off Films. For sure. Yeah, shout the out to those team. guys. Yeah. Um, you know, for... Just the whole team at Moolah Films, like, mm -hmm. I got to give a shout out to them for, you know, giving me the opportunity to get that uh, audition for Moet, and it's just been up from there. So, mm -hmm. you know, thank y'all for, sure. for, you know, seeing me. Shout out to my guy, Thomas. Yes, Thomas, yeah. T, mm -hmm. uh, Derek, Murder, all of them. Uh, Car. Mm -hmm. Um and who else oh my god so many people um my friend my girl lakisa mm. uh for always being there too for me and um yeah i just want to give my flowers to them for sure for sure for sure yeah. shout out to the uh to Mula and everybody else you sister all of them yes. you know what i'm saying come from dc yes you know what i'm saying uh me i'm not saluting nobody uh, episode 200 i'm gonna salute myself Salute myself and salute my producer Q, man. We've been doing this thing for a minute. A lot of these other shows then disappeared. You know what I'm saying? We still going strong. So salute to us. Yes, congratulations to y'all. That's dope. And I do like your show. I watch it. For sure. Opinion, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now this year is almost over. Surprisingly, it is. this is flying. It is. It's like once you turn 18, everything just go by quick. Like, like, dang, I, I just graduated. When I was 18, that was a long time ago. Yeah, but it's June 2024. Mm -hmm. Talk about this year and um, how have things changed from last year as far as being an actress, uh, personal, like, how, how, how have this year been for you, ups and downs? Oh, gosh. Uh, 2024 has been, I would say, <laughs> joy and pain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it has been, I've had some great things going on, okay. um, but I've also been grieving, mm -hmm. you know, loss of my mother and yeah. friendships, and it's just been a lot. So I would have to say joy and pain. It's been great. Okay. It's been good. Mm -hmm. Blessed. You yeah. know, my kids are great. Everyone's great. So for sure, it's been a blessing. And then I'm here on your show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Come always now. that's always a good thing. That's always yes, a good thing. Yes, and I've been working. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's been joy and pain. Yeah, emotion. Gotta have emotion. Mm -hmm. And you say uh, lost? You lost your mother this year? Uh, no, January of twenty. Two. 22 okay yes. okay now I, I lost my mom that was uh in 2012 oh, so I don't, you know if you want to talk about it cool but just speak on that like you ain't get one mother one father oh. unfortunately i lost both oh. 
but just like talk about the grieving and just like what what kept you strong what kept you going what kept you motivated you know what i'm saying because a lot of times we sit and just you know what I'm saying be sad or can't move on and stuff like that and your parents want you to move on yeah but just talk about the time you got to spend with her and like how did that change you oh i wasn't expecting this one so I'm, a... I'm sorry but you it was only right when you said it i couldn't just um, go past that you my mother was the hardest thing for me. I've never experienced a loss like that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and we had like a tenacious type of relationship, but it was getting better over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought um, I was accepting her death in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I thought I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to make it through, you know, and I would start getting busy working with the family and everything. But then I was grieving hard. Mm -hmm. I, I cry every single day day i cannot oh. think of a day that i did not cry oh, well, yeah, in the yeah. last year and a half for my mother mm -hmm. um but what kept me going is my children mm -hmm. i'm working and i was able to use all that pain sadness and everything into my work mm -hmm. you know and i hope you guys can see that in my new movies that's coming out for sure for sure you know so it just and me and my mom you know my mom she was a single mom mm -hmm. you know and we went through a lot together, yeah oh yeah you know Love so that. it's like I'm doing this for my mom, mm. my kids. You can't, I can't give up. I've yeah. come too far, and that just kept me going. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was a little, well, I was like 24. My mom passed. My mm. brother was like, who just left here? It was like 17. It was mm. a senior year of high school. So that 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 changed, but it's like you can't you can't stop. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Going. Yeah. Now, the last question, as far as like losing your mother, mm -hmm. did that help tighten your relationship with your kids? Did you start thinking about like things that you need to do with them, and you know? You know, I try to have a, uh, like I said, me and my mom's relationship was very different, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I have a very different relationship with my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, it definitely, um, well, I, you know, I try to have a strong relationship with my kids and always want to know things about them to stay, um, I don't know, connected with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it definitely made me stronger with my niece and nephew mm -hmm. and trying to keep other relationships strong because, mm -hmm. um, you know, that fear of losing oh, yeah. those loved ones. Yeah, no, for sure. They answered that question. I <laughs> That's cool. You know. Yeah, because I am with my family. Like, I make sure, like, we try to do something at least once a month, not just when it's, like, the holidays or mm -hmm. someone passed away, you know, mm -hmm. it's just it could be whenever we get together, it's just, hey, we celebrating a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Nothing going on. Let's get together and just hang out. Yeah, you I'm know? always with my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm always with my kids, my niece and nephew. Like, if I'm not working, you gonna, we, I'm with them. For sure. What are you doing? For sure, so, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. We can move on from that. You know, that, I don't want no crying, no Oprah moment. Those. <laughs> now, what's some, um, what's some things that you, that you had set for yourself that you still trying to obtain and achieve as far as, you know, coming into the new year? Ooh. So I am working on writing a film. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do want to start getting that in the works, you yeah. know, getting my my budget together, mm -hmm. um, and actually finishing the script. Um, and I also want to uh work on God so much. I put me on spot like that. Hey, you know, that's how we gotta do it. So um, I do want to work on my business called Lola's Place. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do want to actually start putting more effort into getting that together. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, yeah. Two, two things. So when you write that film, listen, I've been telling everybody this and everybody been, you know, just disregard what I say. If you need a thug number three, mailman number one, <laughs> I'm your guy. <laughs> if you need some, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it. that's it, that's it though. No, nothing major. Damn. Nothing major. You All know, right, we're gonna get you as the mailman then. Let me get you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We got cool. enough thugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mailman. I got your package. Ooh. <laughs> That's a little weird. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> uh, I don't know. You might sound like smell that male lady. You saw that movie, The Male Lady? No. You seen it? That's a good movie. Okay, okay, okay. I'm about to check it out. Be the, I'm going to write you in as the mailman. We're going to have a little crazy cool. mailman going on. Cool, cool, okay. cool. Got you, got you. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. She said, I'm the mailman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming around, you know what I'm saying? Delivering. <laughs> now, um, What's something that you feel that you need to work on? You talk, you know, you talk about things that you want to achieve this year. What's some okay. things that you need to work on within yourself, personal and you know, business? Oh, oh, a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to work on stuff. I'm always working on my craft. So, um, yeah, I need to work on my social 
uh, my social skills mm -hmm. for me. Um, I I need to start networking more and getting oh, yeah. out you and, and both. off like a social anxiety. Yeah. Right, that's mm -hmm. one thing I'm going to be working on. Yeah. Um, business wise, um, I want to start getting over, like I said, making my own movie. So I want to start learning more on the other side of the acting business wise mm -hmm. and producing my own movies and things like that. Yeah. So what's the, what's the reason behind you being so you know to yourself and not want to venture off and you know be in the mix and stuff? Because I I, do I like to. being at home. I don't, I don't like going out no more. I like being at home and chilling. But my boy tell me all the time I need to get out. You know, saying that people see me and start networking and making connections. So when I say get out, I don't mean like partying. I'm oh yeah, no, partying. no, no, that, no. I, that. But, um, I'm over that. <laughs> just to me, I mean, there's so many dope people out here in the city mm -hmm. that I have not met, and I mm -hmm. want to get out and start meeting people. For sure, you know what I mean. So got to, got yeah. to, got to. Now you know this month is mental, uh, mental health awareness for men. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask you, you know, what is some, who can you talk to when things are you know get down for you and you know. Life ain't really going the way you want it to go. You know, life is life. And who can you talk to is going to keep you, you know what I'm saying, saying? Well, God. Yeah. Number one. Mm -hmm. um, Got to talk to the Lord. For sure. <laughs> um, my sister, mm -hmm. my role, at least I'll call her, my friend, Lakisa. Mm -hmm. um, but really, that's about it. And then, you know, um, my school, my my team, my 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 the people in the class, mm -hmm. um, we're like a little therapy session, mm -hmm. you know, so. I have them. For sure. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I say we don't jump right into your profession. Mm -hmm. I like to ask things, you know, get to know you a little bit before mm -hmm. we jump into that. What um, what was the first adult decision you made that really felt like, okay, I'm I'm grown out here? <sighs> Having my son. Mm -hmm. That was the first adult decision. Yeah, how did yeah. that change you? Oh, like, my and God. And how was you, you pre-mother to, like... <laughs> I was young. I was 17. Okay. Um... Having my son literally changed everything about me, literally, like changed my whole path. Like, I don't think I would be who I am today, probably even here if I didn't have my son. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So he changed you a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, how's that? How's he not? Because I know he, he older and stuff oh, like he that. He is like... older. He's 24. He's out in uh, California. Mm -hmm. He's a dancer and um, living his best life. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm proud of him. Okay. 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 You know? Now you think, because a lot of times they say, oh, having a kid so early is going to hurt you. I know me. I had my son. I was 19 and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like I needed that just to get some responsibilities because I was mm -hmm. like, just, you know, young, dumb. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it helped me grow up quicker, but I was still, my mom still gave me the opportunity to be a kid too, have mm -hmm. fun. But I feel like me having a son just, it helped me. Yes. My son, like I said, he changed everything. I mean, I was <laughs> <laughs> not your model student. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I wasn't yeah. your model student. Um, I wasn't your model. It, it wasn't bad, mm -hmm. but I wasn't, you know. He made me that model person. Good for he sure. made me who I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. So put me on that path of wanting to be a better person. Yeah. Shout out know? to the son. Shout out yeah, to the son. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Last time you cried, it didn't have anything to do with death. Do didn't have nothing to do with death. Oh. It could be watching. Yeah, yeah. I don't, it, can, it ain't got to be sad. Shouldn't should have me in tears. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Sophie, what was we watching? See, so I'm <laughs> not even listening. Um, A movie. What's, what, all right, so what's a movie that you can't absolutely watch or you gonna cry with me is Pursuit of Happiness I'm gonna let y'all know right now and Crooklyn mm. those are two movies if I watch it ah, I'm crying shit I set it off set it off oh yeah with Cleo oh, oh yes Cleo <laughs> TT all of them I be yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, T.T. made me mad that movie. And she did. She was irritating. Yeah, hey, like, come on, T.T., chill. She, she died. That, that made me cry. Yeah, Set yeah, it yeah. off. I'm going to cry in that movie for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, set it off. For sure. <laughs> so is it a movie that you that you play kind of like, have it been a role, or mm -hmm. just watching other people that kind of like mad, mad, made you think about something that happened in your past life or whatever yes. that have gets you, you emotional? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Have you ever seen that show, They? Mm -hmm. they, 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 they. They, no, not They. Uh, them? Them. Oh, yeah, I heard them? it. That, that you watching? Yeah, season two. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. That girl, Deborah Abdul. Oh, she's bad, motherfucker. She bad. I love her and be crying. And, oh, I be in my feels. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, so okay. I was crying from that, too. Now, another question I want to ask. Mm -hmm. Something that you wanted to be that you never told no one. <laughs> Rapper. I knew it. <laughs> so, what, tell me, what was that rap name? Lovely T. Lovely T. Uh, I know you got some bars. Go ahead. 
and give us some bars that you wrote for that day. I cannot rap. Make little mixtapes with my brother and his friend, little Den. Oh man, lovely T. Oh, lovely T was the shit. Mm-hmm. How long did that 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 last? That you know, wanted to be in the music game. Like twelve to like fourteen, okay. fifteen. So when you, when you got older, you never thought about revisiting thought about lovely T. I knew I was gonna be an entertainment, but I didn't mm-hmm. know. I didn't know I was gonna be an actor. Mm-hmm. Did not know that. At first, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I knew it was gonna be something for sure. Hickey, mm-hmm. lovely team in the building, man, with the bars. <laughs> who would you, who, if you would have kept going, who who you think you would have uh, molded your uh, music career after? Dr. Dre mm-hmm. knew was a mix of Master P and Mystical up in that year. Oh, that's a wild little mix, Master P, <laughs> Dr. Dre, and Mystical. <laughs> that's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. Shout, what's wrong with Mystical, man? That, that dude can't stay from raping. Yeah. Man. Oh, see, now that, that's crazy. Yeah, how you go to jail twice for See, but see, back in the days when I used to listen to his music, you know, I didn't know about all that stuff. I was young, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I used to listen to The Chronic. That was like, that was yeah. an everyday thing. But mm-hmm. throw a little miss to go in there. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm good on that. Stay on music. If you had to tell somebody about yourself only using an album or a song, mm-hmm. what would the album or a song be that's going to tell me about Tamia? Tamia is very complex, bro. Because mm-hmm. you have, no, nah, I can't. I, there's not one album. I it's not one. No, nope. not even a song that that just kind of remin- make you reminisce and think about a certain time. Like, yeah, that was that time. <sighs> it ain't got to be your whole life. It could be a portion of your life. Mary J. Blige, share my world. Okay, okay. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Good one, good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What what uh, what was life like when that album first came out for you? Oh, I was young. How old was I? I think I had just came out here to Detroit to visit. I was like 14 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, what was I going? Oh, cool. Yeah, it's just young. I remember, yeah, I was young. I, last, I was thinking about this last night. I was listening to an interview that Marcus Houston had. Uh, <laughs> he was on a tank. Um, what's that? Power. What? R&B. Yeah, yeah. RB Money podcast. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about the uh the song Naked and how he had uh tried to avoid working with the with the team he was working with to make the album because I guess that same team was working with Marion. so he didn't want them to sa- he didn't want the albums to sound like uh. so he's like listen if I'm gonna do this it gotta be completely different from him and that's when I didn't even know Tank had wrote that song I didn't know. like he in the background he left the vocals on there everything I didn't and know. to me that's a underrated album that's a good R and B album Thank what's you. a good R and B album that people don't show love to in your opinion. But no, they do show love to that. Cause I was gonna say Tyrese, but they show love. Ooh, I don't know. It, not that, not like how a lot of albums. Tyrese gonna get a lot of love to me. You don't think so? I mean, probably because he's been doing some weird stuff lately. Yeah, but like, what's that one album where Sounds of Love Making was on? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot. Man. That, that was had, that was a good album. But Jamie Fox, who was Jamie Fox? Uh, you remember he had an album? Mm-hmm. The second thought, album, the first album was. I that. think people were sleeping on that album. That was a good album right there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But yeah. I can't really re- remember it much, but it was. Mm-hmm. If I can remember. The Tyrese Tyrese album definitely was. Mm-hmm. But like I said, when people do weirdo stuff, like yeah. even like Marcus Houston, him getting married to a nineteen year old, yeah, and you damn near fifty, like <laughs> damn, he is old, isn't he? Yeah, Marcus Houston, yeah. And then he was even talking about like how he stopped doing Sister Sister because he felt like that character took away from him being a singer. Cause it was like he was looking like they was looking at him like a goofy instead of like, hey, I'm I'm this R&B se- sensation, but y'all look at me as Roger. Get out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he said he stopped doing that just because he didn't want to be, you know what I'm saying, like typecast. Yeah, I can see that. Like like how Urkel was and stuff like that. So yeah, man, shout out to Mark Houston. That's, hey, to me he was cold though. But then he got older, and started getting fake hair and getting married to young girls. It was like, dog, <laughs> it's over for you, dog. <laughs> what was the album that changed your life? What will you say, Chronic? Yeah, I I don't know why I used to listen to that album like every day. Like that was just so hard to get for some reason. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. The... You see, no album changed my life though. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. No, but they definitely had an impact on me. So. Yeah, four hundred degrees changed my life. Who's that? Juvenile. Yeah, that album changed my life just because. Love me some juvenile. Yeah, I was listen. I was listening to childish rap. Mm. So once my uh, stepbrother shout out to Charles. Once he introduced me to that album, it took me back to go ahead and like start listening to like real rap. Mm-hmm. Cause prior to that, I was listening to like MC Hammer, Criss Cross, uh, Another Bad Creation. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, ABC, like ain't the, wrong with the that. boys. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so then when he came with that, I'm like, hold on, what's this? And you started listening to that real shit. Huh? Yeah, so it was like 400. Yeah, like, like let me go ahead and get hip to this real stuff, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Growing up, you just mentioned that you had uh, came to visit Detroit at 14. Yes, so so, I'm from California. Okay, from Cali. Okay, Born talk, and mm-hmm, talk about you know the household and uh, how it was. In California, what made y'all move to Detroit from Cali? <laughs> oh, shoot, yeah. So I was born and raised in California, but me and my mom did move around a lot. So I lived in New York for like three and a half years and mm-hmm. moved back to Cali when I was like 12. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we moved here mm-hmm. to Detroit yeah. when I was 17. Okay. Three weeks before I graduated from high school. Three. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> that was, that was kind of weird to move. Hey, mama, though. It's all good. I'm, I'm over it. Yeah. How, how mad would you make that move? Like, right, you know, this is the it end was of... the worst time of my life. Yeah. I, I mm-hmm. really did. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, I'm over that. So, Detroit, like, why, why Detroit? Though? My mom's here. My mom was born and raised here in Detroit. Her whole family is from here, mm-hmm. uh, Wyoming and Finko area. Oh, yes. Um, my so, she came back here to her roots mm-hmm. and we uprooted here and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then I've been here since. How did you, how did you feel about Detroit? Like, coming, you know, staying in, in Cali, staying in New York. Shout out to Granddad making noise upstairs. <laughs> staying in Cali, staying in New York, and you know how people talk about Detroit being so tough to live in, and you know, talk about how, how did you look at Detroit before you moved to Detroit and actually got to love the city? Well, I grew, I lived in the hood my whole life in mm-hmm. California, New York. So I mean, and then we moved here. Like it was no difference, but it is a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I said, I grew up in California mm. with gangs and stuff, yeah. and I thought I knew about life, but I didn't. Yeah. Like, I feel like I learned life when I moved here. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm sure. saying? Like, yeah. I learned everything when I moved here mm. to Detroit. So. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's um, when you got to make like real guys, because, you know, guys in other st- states is like, they're not, real guys? they're not real guys. Like, what? Detroit, like, <laughs> it was like, hey, be some weirdos outside. To me, me and my aunt talk about this all the time. Whenever we go to different, you know, cities and states. It's like mm-hmm. everybody seems weird to us, but maybe we are the weirdos, and everybody else are regular. <laughs> Cause I, I ain't been in California. My my brother okay. stayed in um in Burbank. He stayed in uh Bel Air. Okay. And then I'm, I was going around South Central, get my hair braided and stuff at the time when I had hair. And I was in Philly, okay. New Orleans, Texas. Like everybody, all it seemed weird. But when you come back home, it's like it's like all right, this is how things are supposed to be. Different. Um, you know what? A lot of people wore like name brand, like I learned about Kuji and like mm. all this stuff that I never heard of mm. where I was from. So yeah. I did learn a lot about the sure, different yeah. culture when I first moved here. Like when I went to school, they was like, girl, you got to know about this, 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 this. And I was like, oh, God, I don't know yeah. About that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well, shout out to your mom for making the best decision of your life. Well, I, I would have to see now. Yeah. You come to the gym. To say now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yes, because I got all my beautiful kids and stuff mm-hmm. here, you know, and I wouldn't be where I'm at if do, I didn't come. Do you ever so. think about how life would be if you never came here and stayed in Cali? I don't now. I don't now. Mm-hmm. I used to. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I used to be like, oh, I got to get back home. Uh, Mm-hmm. I don't even think about that no more. Yeah. You know, like yeah. this is where I'm from. Mm-hmm. At first, I used to always be like, I'm from California. I'm not from Detroit, but I'm like, no, you've been here for yeah, a long time. Years. Yeah, for you're sure. 2000. Oh, like, yeah. Like, my whole life, everything yeah. about me, I learned as an adult here, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, no, I'm from Detroit. I ain't from California. Now, that 2000 Detroit is different from Detroit now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's just everything. Like, I just. Yeah. It was it was so much it was so different like the malls going to the mall mm-hmm. um I remember having um summer jam at the Hart Plaza Fairlane I used to be at Fairlane Northland mm-hmm. all that like under that is there yeah see I was in the east we was going to Eastland oh okay. so we come to the west side we was like okay. our house was wide open like it's like the girls on the west side was so much different from the east side and it was like all right we had never talked to the east side girl again I love the east side. All my homies and stuff, but girls, oh no, oh no, that's funny. <laughs> oh no, it took me a long time to uh, distinguish the east side from the west side, and it was like Woodward was mm-hmm. the, and I'm like, okay, I get it now. So, do you see a difference now? In, in your opinion, what's the, what's the, what's like what's different? Like just and you just it's just obvious, like between the east and the west. Be honest. Maybe the trees. I feel like you're looking. <laughs> oh, oh. I wasn't spending that. Answer. <laughs> The West Side got more trees. Okay. West Side definitely got more houses. More trees. <laughs> now, because my kids never, because my my uh, my son, my, my oldest son, he's from the city. We moved we moved when he was young. But my two youngest, they from Southfield, Livonia, okay. and stuff like that. So my 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 son, who was just here, mm-hmm. he don't really be in the city like that. So we was coming through the city just to go to my brother's house. He was like, why is the house? There's no houses. Like, why y'all want to live here? Like, so it was like, do you? 
<laughs> your, your kids, are they from the hood? Like, they know... They're not. Okay, so when they come to the hood, do they be looking like, what the hell is this? No, because they're used to coming. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We 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 in the hood all the time. Yeah. We just came from the hood. We always... So they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they know. You know, my mother, she lived in the hood. She loved the hood. My mom was never going to move out the hood. Okay, so, for sure. you know, we was always over there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but that, that, get back, that first year here, like, how, like, did it take some... You know, getting used to like that. You know, because two thousand, hey, that's I'm what? Well, I'm like fourteen, something like fifteen around that you time. Know, it was hard for me because, like I said, I was three weeks before graduating from high school, so I only had two classes at that school. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had my son trying mm-hmm. to find a job. It was it was hard. Yeah. I want to say my first couple of years here was hard. yeah. It took it took some time to Baby. get right. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> you made it though. Never would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> With <healthy>. like damn, <laughs> it all came for, for real. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was real hard. And see, with me, I didn't realize like me living in Detroit. My brother used to always be like, because he moved out when he went to college and stuff like that, never came back. Like, he always tell me how bad it is. I'm like, I love Detroit. Man, this junk is good. Like, it's great outside. I mean, I moved to Texas with him and came back home. I'm like, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, used to, I saw the difference. Mm-hmm. I saw a difference. But it, it's not like being it's not like being home, man. Like, it's not like Detroit. And right now, it's, it's, hey, we thriving as far as on the mm-hmm. music, on the movies, mm-hmm. just in general. You know what I'm saying? Detroit yeah. is, a, is a lot better. Everybody you know, want to be here now. Yeah, downtown was a scary place to be in 2000. Now it's like, it's, it's lit mm-hmm. downtown and stuff. Um, now you talking about you and your mom mm-hmm. growing up and stuff like that. Did you have a relationship with your father? I do. Mm-hmm. We did. Um, I mean, he's from California, so whenever I was, you know, home, I would see him, but it, yeah. Yeah, what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh-huh. mm-hmm. now, did that did that play a role? Like as far as like, you know, because I talked to a lot of uh, young ladies on the show, mm-hmm. and some mentioned not having a father, and I always ask the question like, when your father not active as much as he should be, do you start to look, you know, for that in the in the man in relationship wise? No, but I always wanted that for my kids, mm-hmm. and my kids have great fathers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um. No, but since you say that, I definitely um, have chosen men that were similar to my father and I did not know. Okay. So, yes, mm-hmm. I see what you mean by that. Mm-hmm. And yes, it takes, you got to learn yourself to realize that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize that until I'm older. Like, oh, shit, yeah. I was dating people that were similar to this nigga. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, guys do too, because mm-hmm. I live for like, my mom was a basic woman. So I look like a, you know, I say basic, I mean like the ones, I'm not saying basic like in a bad way. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like just not trying to be all out there and just trying to be, you know, I looked at my mom like, all right, this is how a woman should be. Take care of business. Ain't trying to sit here and be overly sexualized and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, just a real woman. And that's what I was looking for. Like, you know, first two. Never mind. <laughs> I ain't gonna go. I ain't gonna go, go. I'm about to make this me. I'm about to <laughs> two box and shoot anybody here. But yeah, we do tend to go after the ones that we, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. in our life without even knowing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and basic is a good thing. I know for some of you people, basic is bad. For me, basic is great. I'm basic. I'm just a basic, normal guy. You know what I'm saying? with being basic. Now, uh, and, you know, your younger years and stuff like that, get mm-hmm. through school, how would you as a student, and, you know, talk about that? You mean high school? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was not your model student in high school. Now, my kids is here. Mm-hmm. Okay, Ian. <laughs> and they, they going to high school next year? They are going to high school. Okay. No, I was not your model student. Um, I was bad. I was always fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say I almost got kicked out of school. I was I had like a two point something GPA. Mm-hmm. It was like in the tenth grade. I think I was like on my last suspension or something. Who knows? Yeah, listen to that crying. Got you going crazy for sure, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you know, I don't know how to explain it, but. It's like I knew, like, I knew better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think I had a teacher who told me one day, like, you're smart. Mm-hmm. Why are you doing yeah, get that? Get your mind right. Yeah. What are you doing? And I swear I never forgot that. And I was like, damn, he was right. Mm-hmm. You know? And, but yeah, I'm a, t- man, like I said. We came along When way. I had my son, yeah. life changed. Slows you down. I was a, a good... model. Like, everything about me changed. Mm-hmm. You know, but just my way of thinking. Okay, what's college in the picture? Are you usually like... Yeah, so I, I went to U of M. Yes, I tried to go to school right after uh, high school mm. for here. And then I had a whole bunch of stuff happen, and mm. I didn't get to finish right away. And then I ended up uh, graduating from U of M in 2012. Mm-hmm. So, oh. yep. That's what's up. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. 
I'm basically I was gonna go back to college for the longest. <laughs> I went I went for Dang. one I went for two months, like and that's when I found out I was having my, my kids and it's okay. like I'm in class, the only thing I'm thinking about is like, all right, you about to be a dad. Mm-hmm. So it's like school was like wasn't in the picture for me no more. Like I remember this dude and my mom, they walked me to class. And I went to I just went to a little, you know, junior college because I wanted to go to Eastern. And um I went there, I wasn't expecting like I'm like these people in here thirty four years old. Like mm-hmm. this is crazy. Like this is mm-hmm. weird. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I say I was gonna go back. So I'm I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm still gonna do it. Hey. That's still on my on my on my list of things I need to accomplish and there get. There you go. And yeah. you should. I call myself going back when was that a couple of years ago to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, no, I want to be an actor. For sure. <laughs> yeah, ain't nothing wrong with it. At what point did you really start taking this acting serious since you already just said you mm-hmm. want to be an actor? At what point did you start taking this serious? When COVID hit, mm-hmm. I was pregnant. And at the time, my job was like, we weren't allowed to travel, do anything. And I had got nominated for Best Actress at the Las Vegas Film Festival. Oh, wow. That's what's up. So it was like, are you going to go? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can go. I just found I was pregnant. If I go, my job. And I was like, no. Mm-hmm. Is this what you're trying to do? No, you're trying to be an actor. You're going to go. Mm-hmm. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going. Okay. I don't care what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then I got back. I was scared. Like, oh, shit, I'm going to lose my job. And I was like. And it was not as bad as I thought. But yeah. I realized that first step was my me taking it serious. And when I quit my job mm-hmm. to just mm-hmm. focus on acting, that's when I knew. So you say during COVID, that's when you took it like you it was like serious, serious. Took it serious. So uh, when would you? When did you like start? You know, saying dabbling into act, acting before. I've been for ten years. Ten years. So this is my tenth year. Okay. Okay. But I would say that's when I took it, where it was like. This is all I'm doing. What was it about COVID that just made people just lock in? It wasn't even... Because you see a lot of people... I'm sorry to cut you off. But a lot of people, once COVID hit, it was like, whatever they was doing or was thinking about doing, it's like, all right, I'm I'm in it. I'm doing it. Oh, see, that's a... a, 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 a... (laughs) Okay. See, I can do that in two parts, but I'm going to try to make it real smooth. But... I was sick prior to that. Okay. I had like a, a, a illness that happened mm-hmm. and um then COVID happened right after that. So mm-hmm. I hadn't been outside in like a whole year. Mm-hmm. So like that like I said, that moment was like, what you gonna do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and any other time I'm gonna pick my job over anything. Yeah. That moment I was like, nah. And then when I quit my job, mm-hmm. that's when yeah. it was but COVID yeah. <laughs> It was, it was you either making decisions, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It was one of them decisions. You're going to let this COVID and people put rules on you where mm-hmm. you're going to not do your dream. Like, what you going to do? Yeah. And that's that's what it was for me. Yeah, because COVID either just made, it just showed that you were just like, you wasn't shit. Mm-hmm. Or it just, show, it just showed that you had some ambitions. Like, one or two, either going to keep you lazy or it's going to keep you motivated. Because a lot of people was thinking like, that. like the world, the world going to end. I, mean, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Because you got people being lazy to collect unemployment. I mean, it was cool. I wish I could have got some of it. <laughs> Shout out to those who, who was able to do that. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then you got the ones that just like, you know what? You never, I think it was like, you never know what could happen. This world, life, it could be mm-hmm. over in the, in the flash vibe. Absolutely. So let me go ahead and just lock in and really do what I need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, because with me, I was doing the podcast, but I wasn't, it was, I was still new. And it's like, once COVID hit, it was like, all right, let's lock in. You know, and then people start people starting businesses. Everybody had business. Everybody yep. was looking, everything, hey. doing hair. Everybody was learning how to cut hair and it stuff like that. It was a great moment. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, it, was, it had some greatness. It had some sadness. You mm-hmm. know, we lost, you know. No, for sure. So. Yeah. Were well, you one of those ones that like, hey, I'm not going around nobody. Like, because, you know, you had some people. Was, we didn't, we cared, but we was like, still like, COVID was kind of fun. Because like, we locked yeah. in. <laughs> Don't hate me for this, but no, I was not. I I I I didn't like to wear a mask, mm-hmm. gloves. Like I just, it was. Yeah, I know. No, I was just when you said you the know. gloves, I just start thinking about my father in law. Yeah, I I didn't. Yeah, I didn't unless I had to. Yeah. Unless I had to. People were spraying down groceries. Yeah, I, I wasn't doing none of that. I know. Yeah, it was bad. I know. It was bad. So, but, I mean, I took precautions when I needed to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know? How was it auditioning during that time? Like and like doing these roles, like y'all have masked up until y'all do a scene, then y'all good or I didn't have any work though. Well, Hill and Walls was the only thing that I did, I think, after COVID. Mm-hmm. But that was about it. I mean, I did have classes and mm-hmm. we wore masks and stuff, but that was about it. Yeah. Class. Cause I saw a podcast I... interview. They had masks on the whole time. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, I can't understand nothing y'all saying right Mm-mm. now. This is crazy. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. Do you get um 
Do you get offended when people be like, oh yeah, a Tubi movie or a Tubi actor or a Tubi actress? Do you get offended by that? Because like, you know, we'd be like, oh, that's a Tubi movie. Or like, if you see something low budget, oh, that's some Tubi stuff. Like, No, I don't get offended because some of those same movies be on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They be on sure. everything. So that just be people saying that's a Tubi actor. Tubi got some no, great sure. movies Heck on yeah. there. And there ain't no Tubi actors. Like, mm-hmm. I do be seeing, like, comments like, um, that Tubi this, that Tubi. And I'm like, I want to be in a Tubi. I'm like, dog, these people out here, <laughs> like, grinding. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? There's these people who just say, I want to be in a Tubi movie, and we just record just it. Yeah. No, like, these, this is their life, yeah. you know? So I don't get offended. It's mm. just... Have you had to check somebody about that? No. Okay. No. Yeah. I don't think no one said any. I mean, you can't really be a. <sighs> nothing. Go ahead and say it now. Oh, I ain't got nothing to say. Okay. Like, well, you're about to check somebody. I'm not, because there's yeah. no reason to check nobody, because it is what it is. Like I said, you can see some of those same movies on any no, on other fast, platform. Fast. Now, in the movie uh, Moet, that was mm-hmm. that was a dope movie. It and shout to Rose Pitt is somebody that yes. I didn't think was going to be that good of an actor. Oh, you didn't? Because like, I, I just knew him but for the music, okay. for the company and stuff like okay. that. He came on the show. Cool, cool dude. Yeah, Real that's cool my dude. first time meeting him. I yeah. yeah. Really like that dude, man. I like his story and everything. Yeah. And when I see he was doing these movies, I'm like, I wonder how he's gonna be as an actor. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm looking like, oh, this dude is legit. <laughs> like, he's nice. But uh, talk about that movie, mm-hmm. how crazy you were. I know you didn't, so I know you're like, first of all, it's not crazy. <laughs> Y'all be driving us crazy, yo, lying ass nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm a good guy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like when I seen that little scene, like, dang, she popped him. But talk about that movie and like, not on, um, not this one I had to do with you, but like, mm-hmm. what are some signs? In relation, like, all right, he or she is doing some dirt. Oh, shit. I'm not an expert on that, so I wouldn't know. But you niggas know what y'all be doing. You be knowing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I ain't got to give no... Uh, not for sure. Nah. <laughs> Don't be trying to get the play from me, because we know. We know. I know, I know. That's why I just be cool. I oh, be chill. Nah, you ain't going to get nothing from me on that, because you already know. But I'll be trying to know. <laughs> get you up to this. Hey, no, I'm just playing. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> but talk about that movie. Like, how you feel about that, uh, that movie and that role? Ah. Uh, Man, I, you know, I used to be cringy looking at myself on TV because I'm like, oh, I could do that better. And, I, you know, there's so much on that movie I could say I could do better. But I was mm. proud of that movie. Like, I was proud of myself. I mm. feel like I seen the growth in my um, in my acting when I seen that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, Yeah, I was very proud of that movie. For sure. Yeah. Now you um you start off in uh on 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 stage right I did talk about that like the transition and performing on stage to film yeah so I started out um dang I don't even remember what my first stage uh play was but I I love stage I love you know being live just the whole thing of it. and I thought that was my love until mm-hmm. I got into film mm-hmm. oh I was like oh yeah this is my new baby yeah for sure yeah, yeah um and I had got into a movie what movie did I do I don't even remember what movie it was I think I did a short film mm-hmm. but once I started doing filming I thought I like both but I love film now mm-hmm. like film is my number one now when you're on stage like what's the pressure like because it's right there like you mess up they if see it right up, you gotta yeah. keep going yeah you, like, and then having that chemistry with your uh castmates mm-hmm. is major yeah. because they can pick up you know what I mean and yeah. keep you going when you when you mess up but the worst thing is not knowing your line or something yeah, you can't yeah. be like oh shit no you gotta keep going yeah because yeah, that's know? my dog um are you familiar with sean prince no well he, he played a couple um movies off uh he they hate me he hate me she hate me one of them hate me's <laughs> he was in there but he was saying like when he, he do stage plays he's like when you mess up you kind of be like hey man I hate your jeans. I used to kind of like ad lib and stuff like that. Tell him to come back. He said you can't just stop because he said he ain't stop. had time. But he just stopped. But then you got kind of like mm-hmm. improvise. And he said if you got a good person across from you, they will know and they just pick, pick up on it. Yep. Yeah. So when you have that good chemistry, they'll know where to pick you up at, and you can keep going. You ever had that time that you stumbled? Like, oh, absolutely. Do you remember uh-huh. when like like just like dang, I messed up bad. Well, oh, I mean, I don't know if this one really count, but uh, my first stage play I ever did, and I remember. I couldn't get the words off. I was just standing there <laughs> with my eyes like, and I was talking to myself and I was like, people are not here to see you just stand stupid. Make like, a move. And it was like a, in my head, like seven minutes, but it probably was like a 20 second delay and mm-hmm. then I did it. But yeah, you got had the... those moments. For yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Now you got two movies that's coming out mm-hmm. soon, uh, Vengeance and um, The, the Peer Tutor. Yes. That's the one that's they, your first lead, right? Uh, the Peer Tutor is my yeah, first Your first lead. lead. Yes. Talk about that and like the pressure of having your first lead 
oh. leading role and stuff. And how did that, you know, oh. I know um, Thomas Harris uh, produced that movie, right? Or yep. wrote uh, that movie. And Derek Scott. Mm -hmm. Yep. Talk about that movie. What can we expect, and when can we see it? Because I'm, I'm, I'm interested. My boy, uh, dang, well, I'm, um, Chris, Chris, Chris Collins. Yeah, Chris. Yes. Yeah, he. That's yes. another one. He a great, so dope, he, ain't great he? he a great actor for Absolutely. real. Absolutely. And yes. you will be cut my my girl, my wife grass. <laughs> <laughs> White beard up. <laughs> like, no, go sit down, dog. I'll cut the grass. Y'all let Chris come and cut y'all grass now. Hey, Chris, no, I don't cut. Stay away, Chris. We don't need you cutting grass. You over here cut more than grass. Oh, man. But talk about that movie and, that, and, that, and getting that leading role. So getting that leading role, I had got called in for the audition. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got called in like two days later for a second audition. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think they called me back like that night. And I got it, and then they gave me the script. And I want to say we filmed like three or four days after, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I had learned everything in that script, and it was very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a lot of pressure because I feel like whenever I'm doing something, I feel like I'm still auditioning. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that was my first lead role. It was a lot, um, but I was already prepared for it. Okay, you know for I've sure. been preparing for it for for my training, mm -hmm. and so I was ready. It yeah. was meant, and I'm just. I'm excited. Yeah. Was well, a little frustration, like, man, I'm, I want, I want a lead role. I want to be a, the star of the movie. Or you no. like, hey, I'm gonna just take my time. It when it come, it come. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never mm -hmm. felt like that. Like, mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've been training for like the last three years, mm -hmm. just working on my car because I want to be one of them actors that you guys will always remember. For you know sure. what I'm saying? When y'all be like, Will and Viola, yeah. I want y'all to be like, Tamia. Yeah, for sure. You sure. know? So, sure. and so I take my craft very seriously. So mm -hmm. I've been preparing for mm. these things yeah. you know so no for sure yeah heck yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> when, and when can we like i said we, i remember i seen you guys posted in 2023 i'm waiting on it yeah. when, 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 when we gonna see the yeah, movie we need, like, we when, need that movie on that please ask i'm yeah. asking right. i'm asking for a friend for sure for sure yeah. thomas what's up bro yeah we love you over here man yeah, i don't know yeah. i don't know yet mm -hmm. but i'm hoping this year okay okay this year now with like I said, Detroit mm -hmm. is thriving on the movie scene and rap scene. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like a lot of people are just trying to be actors and actresses just because they seeing these movies and they, you know, what I'm saying like they just doing it for just like, hey, it's cool, let me do it, and they getting these roles, but they're not really putting the time and the effort behind just really working on the craft like you guys are. I can't say that, but I think people probably have been doing that forever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With everything, huh? Um, but I do feel like there was a lot more people wanting to be in movies, mm -hmm. um, but. I can't really say because, like mm -hmm. I said, I'm not really out there seeing what's really going on mm -hmm. and everything. But I think that's always been the case. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know yeah, what oh, I yeah. mean? The, the cool thing about yeah. I already tried. Yeah. 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 So, um, but if you're going to ask me about it, I'm only going to, if you serious about this, like I'm only messing with people who's serious about you know, if you're gonna reach out to me, make sure you're serious about no, it. No, for sure. Don't waste my you time. Yeah. Don't waste my time. Now, do you, if you think about your favorite movie. <laughs> Your favorite movie. Who would you want to substitute and play and play their their role? So you know, what I'm saying like, hey, mm -hmm. if it's like a uh, baby boy, you want to be Yvette. Like, what movie would you love to be a sub for and come in and that you taking that role? Dang. Mm, none. It's so many new roles to create. It is, but you know, hey, you might want to recreate that and play that role, you know? Oh, uh, don't do that. Put your own little spin to it. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Put your own flavor to it. No. Nah. Hey. No. Because every movie that I've seen that mm. I've liked, I feel like that person was for that role. Okay, okay, okay. So I can't. Because you, you could have been like, set it off. You could have took old girl role and played a little tougher because she was that much like I need that money. Like you could have took her role and just been a little thug and a little more thugger than she was. Like you talking about Jada and Nate? Uh, what's the the girl oh, we just got? Titi. Yeah, Titi. You could have yeah, you could have took her role and been you know put a little flavor to nah, it, made her a little cooler. Nah, we needed Titi for that role. <sighs> Titi did that role. No, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Okay, I'll let you. I'll let you slide. You gotta let me slide on that one. I'll let you slide. For real, you that's slide. that's honest though. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself auditioning for roles outside of Detroit song? Oh, absolutely. I'm always auditioning. Mm -hmm. Always. And, yeah. Because like, it's, it's like a lot of times I do see like a lot of the... Um, but it's it, it been venturing off. Cause I know um, Aaron from Milwaukee. I know a lot of Detroit... Uh, I haven't met them. Yeah, Detroit actors be down there. Like, mm -hmm. cause sometimes I do seem like I do be wondering like when it comes to Detroit films, are we just... As actors and actresses, are we just going to like be, uh, you know, tied down to Detroit? Or are we going to just venture off and start doing other things? Well... So with my, where I'm currently at, 
school like mm -hmm. i get auditions through there so i've had auditions with bt like mm -hmm. i've had auditions outside of mm -hmm. detroit um mm -hmm. so yeah no i don't want to just work in detroit so i'm constantly looking for other mm -hmm. you know things outside of the city oh. and talk about the difference within film mm -hmm. with a movie and a series mm -hmm. like how stressful is it is is one more than the other i ain't never been on no series you never been i know i was i know you have but like just like I have heard. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> just talk about that, like like series and stuff. Because uh, we forgot who it was on here. They were saying like, I they, they they like film a little bit better than playing in a series. Like, and then when you look at major actors too, like it seems mm -hmm. like sometimes they get like um, think about your favorite TV shows like okay. Carlton. Could you ever see him transition over to a movie? Oh. Like no. Okay, I don't. Okay, like certain yeah, actors we cast it. We then typecast. Yeah, certain actors and actresses is like they stuck in the in the TV series role. I got you. I see what you. Mean. I can't see them playing like, you know, you know, Will Smith guy or Quint Martin and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. like those other like Cole or Tommy or, you know, it's like they stuck as that TV character. See, that's hard to give feedback on because I haven't experienced it yet. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do Not you, that I only want to speak about things that I've experienced, but yeah, I, I couldn't really answer that one. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Who's a character that pissed you off to this day? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would have to say Ike. <laughs> that nigga, I, she whipped his ass in that limo, though, but I would have to say, yeah, that's probably one of the characters. Mine's is Chauncey. Chauncey off Men's Society. Chauncey. Oh, yeah. Like, dog. That nigga first off, was a bitch. Yeah, Chauncey. yeah. You was way was older. Yeah, you was way older than everybody. Mm -hmm. And he was a pervert. Yeah, <laughs> he was. Yeah, yeah. That he had made in the movie about yeah. like your little sister, something like that. Yeah, he way older than everybody. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. and you, you was, the, you probably was the first snitch in the movie. Mm -hmm. Like you, you mad because right. Kane beat you down and stuff like right. that. Like Chauncey's a good one. Yeah, Chauncey and um. Mm. I'm trying to think who else I, I couldn't stand in the movie. I cannot think about Chauncey number one though. Chauncey number Chauncey one. Chauncey number one. You right. And, t uh, I, and it was it's TT too. I didn't like TT and said, "Oh, she made me mad a little bit." <laughs> that bad though. It was like that. I hate her, but I just she was kind of uh, TT. Get get your mind right. Just say Ike. Ike. Yeah. Ike. Yeah. Ike. Yeah. Oh no! What's his name in the color purple? I can't stand it. Danny Glover when he was in the color purple. Oh, okay. Mister. Okay. I ain't gonna mention I've never seen the color purple before. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. But yeah, sorry, take my black card from me. Say, Mister. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a, hey. If y'all got some people that y'all hate, man, let me know in the comments and stuff, man. <laughs> but Chauncey number one, or everybody on my list. And, now talk about because you know Menace and Boys in the Hood. Mm -hmm. Those are two iconic movies mm -hmm. for the hood. Yes. Which one would you choose over the other? Menace is like Menace. Okay. Absolutely. Menace is my favorite, oh. but I feel like Boys in the Hood is more needed just because it gives you different aspects of the hood. I, I agree. You got that one guy that's from the hood, but he really ain't hood, you know, yep. Cuba. Yep. And then you got Ice Cube, his mom, yeah. the way she treated him. Exactly. Just because oh. of the dad. And people deal with that every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you could relate to that, but you could relate to both of them. Yeah. You got a young parent, you know, oh. who's trying to go to college, mm -hmm. you know, saying, trying to figure things out. Yep. Yeah, so you got the, the single dad and the mom working things out. Yep. You know, you never really seen a mom let a dad be a dad, you yeah. know what I'm saying, in a movie like that back then. I didn't realize how much uh, Doughboy's mom, how she treated him. Yeah, you bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew that, but mm -hmm. I watched it again like a couple of years ago, and I was like, damn, she was terrible. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah no, that, that movie is neat. And yeah. Lawrence Fisberg got the coldest name in the world. What's his Furious name? Furious Styles. Oh, I don't, if I was a rapper back then, I would definitely have that name if I could. Like that, that dude was the that's the coldest dad name ever. Like, like, Furious Styles. And how many man will go to jail for so long for stealing out the stove? Doughboy. Because he was black. Man, he was that well his whole <laughs> ten years. <laughs> I'm going to stove anyway. Like, <laughs> kept going in and out. Oh, he was. That's what they said. Well, whatever, dog. <laughs> I don't care. My way is he went to jail at one time. I was there for five years for stealing some candy from the store, dog. Shout out to shout out to dope boy, man. How do you prepare for a role when you get um when you get a role oh, and you shit. get a script? Like, how do you prepare? How do you you know what I'm saying? I read my script and then I read it again, read it again. Then I 
I literally get into my script. Like if you see my scripts, you'd be like, damn, what is that? Mm-hmm. I, I, I learned everything, mm-hmm. like the whole script. Um, and then I get into my character and, um, and usually when I'm working, I don't talk to people, mm-hmm. but my kids, like whatever we're doing. But other than that, I stay, try to stay, stay in that mode. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Now with basketball, with sports, we oh, study, geez. we study athletes, you know, try to mimic their game and stuff like that. Try mm-hmm. to steal a little bit, a little bit of that. Who is that for you when you, as far as being a better actress? Is there anyone that you study, look up to that makes you a better actress? Oh, I like so many people. Um... Say that one more time. The actress that you just study to make yourself better. Just somebody that you kind of like take a little bit of this from them, a little bit of that from them. Say I take anything away from people, but there's a lot of them that do inspire me. I Mm. love the way they work. So it makes me uh, work on my characters to try to get to that place I see them at. And Mm. I want to say that one actress, I can't think of her last name, Debbie. Mm. Abda something. She Debbie did Allen? that movie Them. Mm-mm. Oh. She a newer actress. No, don't give me a line. And then Dominique Fishback. Like mm-hmm. a lot of them that do drama. Mm-hmm. Like I love them. I love a lot of comedians too though. But um I'm on my drama thing mm-hmm. right now, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I've I've really been looking at them. Now you you was talking earlier about writing your own film. Mm-hmm. Have you prepared for that? Have you started that? I and, have. Okay. Can you give us a little bit of insight or no? Nope. Okay. <laughs> But you're also gonna steal it. Yeah, I know it's gonna be. So I just told you one of my favorite movies is Menace to Society. Mm-hmm. Okay, bad, bad, bad. You you definitely gonna need a mailman in that one for sure. Yeah, you definitely gonna need. One. I listen for to sure. your story. You might be a thug mailman. Bad, bad, bad. Be selling. It. I don't know what kind of. Bad. You said it. Bad. I'm there. I'm right. there. I'm there. I don't. He hey. be a thug mailman. Bad. I'm there. I'm there. Now listen to your story. It seems like we can maybe get you know a little movie. You know, according to how you grew up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I ain't gonna tell y'all. I ain't gonna tell y'all. <laughs> you know, you know, so yeah, hey, I could be mailman that one too. Never know. Just that shy the mailman. Thug, that's all. Thug mailman. Thug mailman. That's what you said. Yeah, for sure. I knew mm-hmm. I I knew a real mailman in the hood that was like that. His name was Mark. And I stayed over here not too far. And Mark, I knew he was like on some different stuff. One time we were playing basketball, mm-hmm. uh neighborhood like we always do. And Mark got fouled real hard. He didn't like the way he got fouled. So Mark went to the trunk and grabbed, you know, a weapon. Oh, wow. And cleared the whole park out. Wow. For a couple of days. Well, that's gonna be your name in the movie. Yeah, Mark. Son's name. So it just it just it just makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're gonna be Mark the Thug Mailman. For sure, for sure. So, yeah, no, make sure y'all remember that. Yeah, yeah. Mark was crazy dude. And he could hoop. He was like kind of like a um He's just one of those dudes who like do everything in the dirty work. Mm. He was your dirty work type of hooper. And like I said, he got mad this one time and my man was kind of like, oh, so well, whatever, do something about it. And he did something about it. He went to get that pistol and cleared it out. Cleared the whole park out. Shout out to yeah. Mark, man. Shout out to Mark because that's going to be him in the movie. Yeah. And Mark wound up doing a little bit of time too after this. Well, <laughs> Mark just got out a couple years ago. Damn. And yeah, Mark. Yeah, Mark was, yeah, Mark was crazy. So when I think about that male man, I'm like, this fool was delivering mail, just stop and come in and just play basketball wheels and everything. Mm. Like, all off the mail truck Mark. and stuff, man. Uh, shout out to Mark, man. You was a cool dude. What's a, what's a short-term and long-term goals with this whole acting thing for you? For short-term goals? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's some stuff that you want like right now, immediately? I don't think nothing is immediate. I'm a very patient person. I feel like I've had to be patient with this whole, you know, yeah, my patience through life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when it comes, I guess nothing is immediate. But my long-term goal is, like I said, to really start book. I want to book more, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really ready to get into my own movie bag, too. Mm-hmm. So that's my long-term goal. Short-term goal being uh consistent. Mm-hmm. That's a goal for me. I need to be consistent. You know, I feel like the movie could be done if I was consistent with it. Yeah, yeah, you most know? definitely. Yeah. Was it time that you wanted to give up? All the time. Mm-hmm. Was it time like you were serious? Like, oh, it's over. I'm done. Yes. Well, um, when was that? I would say when I, yeah, mm-hmm. I thought life was over. I yeah. thought this whole acting thing was over mm-hmm. in 2000 and 19 maybe mm-hmm. yeah um and then i was like i'm just gonna go back to school and just be the manager and mm-hmm. just something at my job mm-hmm. and 
I was like, nigga, no, yeah. you, never, you would never be happy doing that. Yeah, most definitely. But I, 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 I contemplated it, and my stomach hurt. Mm. I had an interview for a job. Uh, when was this? About a year and a half ago, mm. and doing the same thing that I was doing when I was giving up. Mm. And then I left out that interview. I knew I had that job, and it was offering way more money than I was making at my other job. Mm. My stomach was hurting so bad. I got in a car and I said, "What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? You quit your job and you gonna go back?" Yeah. I was like, "Is you giving up? No, we're not doing that." Mm -hmm. And Dang. yeah. Man, so what was it like something in particular that made you like you know what this a rap like did something you know happen or just like something you you know, you know I had uh, with your mind? I had a really bad audition here in the city. Mm -hmm. First off, I was should have been prepared and I was prepared, but I was in my head and did everything that I wasn't supposed to do. Went to the audition. I feel like I embarrassed myself. Mm -hmm. It was my first audition here in the city, and I had two auditions that day. And you didn't go to the second one, did you? I did. Okay. The first one I went to. Um, I feel like I had let my boy down who mm. told me about the audition mm. and then the second one I feel like I embarrassed myself so mm. I ate myself up for that man for like a month yeah. like then you know and then I was like I'm just not I ain't doing it it's mm. just it's not even worth it mm. you know and that wasn't it yeah no for sure yeah. that wasn't it yeah yeah mm -hmm. now you say you you know you, you went to that job making the most money and stuff like that from the other job and I was talking about this with somebody I forgot but sometimes just because a job makes a certain amount of money mm -hmm. it, it, it still you won't be happy or satisfied if it's something that you absolutely don't want to do nope. sometimes like that that passion or that other job or whatever else it might make a little bit less money but that's something that you happy with mm -hmm. and life you don't want to work because people work until they 60 70 years old with a job they don't like and you just be real once you retire from a job you ain't got so much time mm -hmm. to live Mm -hmm. So you might as well just go ahead and enjoy that time while you, you know what I'm saying, while you can. Yeah. Because a job will kill you. <laughs> and, they was offering, it, and it was good, too. And I was like, oh, and I could work from home for like 10 days in the office. And I was yeah. like. Was it hard to turn down? Was it hard? Or no. Just, okay. But like I said, when I got in the car and my stomach hurt, I knew. Mm -hmm. I knew at that moment, like, I was making the wrong decision. Yeah. And I was like, I am about to let fear continue to take over me. And I was like, no, if you take this job. Mm -hmm. You saying that you're not about to be doing this acting thing. Is yeah. that what you're saying? And I was like, nope. And I, you know, I felt bad. And I was like, no, mm. let him know. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. I told my cousin, man, that's a job that he was like, hey, man, make this much. You know, I'm like, man, I can't mm -hmm. do it because that means if I do that, I can't coach no more. Because, mm -hmm. like, it's going to mess with the hours. And you, if it's a weekend and it's mandatory, you got to. And if I got a game, I mean, you know, saying, so I'm just like, hey, I love doing this stuff. So. Mm -hmm. If it's there, it's there. I'm good. I mm -hmm. I just sleep on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, um, I ask ladies this a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, young women, young ladies, whatever. When they do yes, music, young ladies. Yeah, Thank young, you. yeah, you know. Because I'm only 21. For sure, for sure. Hey, shout out to 21 year olds. <laughs> but when it comes to you know being in the industry, just in general, guys use that as a way to try to you know do you know get on and stuff like. Because I asked this one lady, she was uh doing music and mm -hmm. she said that people were trying to collab with her but then she found out it was more than mm -hmm. have you ever had like somebody try to use like acting and stuff like just a way like hey let me slide you my number in the beginning of my career yes mm -hmm. but since no because mm -hmm. I'm I'm really I'm really nice I guess I would say I'm nice and cool so but I have to realize me being nice and cool sometimes make mm -hmm. people think that I'm being nice and you yeah. think you could just be like no yeah. oh, nigga it's not like that you yeah, know yeah, sure. so I'm gonna say in the beginning of my career for sure yeah. you know what I mean but I think no, I'm not, I don't really get that that much. I think I probably had like two people, but other than that, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, guys don't know how to stay professional. They'd be like, oh, yeah. damn. You see her, yeah. girl? Like, you know, no, I haven't that. had that. Yeah. But like, yeah, I did in the beginning. Okay, okay. Shout out yeah. to that. Now, I do this thing called making a band. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Diddy. He's going through a hard time right now. <laughs> but uh, you're making a band um, um, roll. Uh, like, um, I'm going to say cast. Cast, I'm sorry. You're making a band cast. Five cast members, you and four others, to make this nice, dope mu movie. Oh, don't do that to me. Yep, I'm doing it. <laughs> like, local people? We gonna... We, okay, I stick with local people. We can do We can do a cast for local, and then the industry. Okay. So, your dream role locally, and then your dream role in the industry. Making a band five, you and four other people. Well, that's hard. That's I know. crazy. I know. Why would you do that? Uh, you know. That's messed up. <laughs> No, it could be your favorites, you know, no uh, disrespect okay. to nobody else. No, what did you say? So, we're gonna do the industry first, but okay. you, Will Smith, okay, you will, Martin, okay, 
Ice Cube. Okay. <laughs> this is a dope hood movie. Yeah. I like this though. Now, this is hard. Now you gonna have to have you gonna have to finish with another lady. You got Q. I got you. Fresh Prince. <laughs> Martin and yourself. Oh, and it's me. Yeah, yo, you you are in it. Yeah, I'm already in it. Mm -hmm. So we already did my four. We need a fifth. Damn, shit. <laughs> you, Martin, Will, uh, Ice, Cube. Ice Cube, and you need the last one to finish this off. Damn, that's not messed. That's messed up. Okay, uh, we'll go with uh, Neil Long. <laughs> Nigga gonna say Neil Long. Did? Yeah. How'd just, you know that? Damn. I just kind of just from where you was going, you know, Neil Long. I think she might have played a movie with all three of those guys for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. damn, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Damn. I didn't even realize yeah. that, but yeah, you're right. Okay. No. Uh, Detroit. See, why you gonna do that? That's you, messed up. You for other people. All right. So since I've already been in the movie with Chris and Tom, I ain't gonna name them. Okay. But so we're gonna say murder. Bet. We still waiting for you. Come on, murder. You read murder. my message. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> we got murder. All right, I already did a movie with them. Oh, why are you doing this? Oh, I don't know his name. Mm. Damn, I don't wait, know his name. Wait, he know everybody. Okay, know. what's that man's name that's in that movie, Dancing with the Devil? About the old dude. Oh, him. Yeah, yeah. He's in it. I don't know his name, though. Damn, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. All right, yeah. yeah. Him? Okay, so I got Murder, him, and then I got... Because we're going to make a gangster movie, right? So we're going to put... Damn, I can't finish this. I'm trying to look at the, the cast. What was that? Um, yeah, dancing, with dancing with the devil. We gonna put. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. You said you were murdering the old man from Dancing with he the. He murdered the old man. Yeah. I, he, oh God, I know his name. Okay. All right, all right. I'm gonna pick two females though. Okay. Ebony Tate. Mm -hmm. oh, you coming up. Yes. Okay. And another female that I'm going to put in this movie is going to be uh, Mina Monroe. Okay. Okay. What? what? I said that first. I was... Yeah. Shout out to you. I'm... I, was, I was in my head. I was putting my characters together for what they're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? You come on show too. All y'all. All y'all come mm -hmm. on the show, man. We need you. We need you. Okay. That's dope. That's dope. Hell yeah. So yeah, that's our, that's our five. That uh, industry one. Yeah, that'd be dope too. I love that. I love that. I love that. Yeah. What's your definition of success? Like, what do success? And, and, you know, for you, for me. yeah, what's success for you? Oh my goodness. Being able to take care of my family, mm -hmm. that the, being able to be there for them, for me, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's hard when you're trying to be in the industry and I mean, I got a lot of kids, mm -hmm. you know, so being able to be there for them, um, and still do this mm -hmm. and do everything else, yeah. like that, all that, being able to do that and being Seeing how far I've come, mm -hmm. that's success to me. For sure, for sure. Is is there anything that you would do differently with your start? Nope. And what's your advice to someone that want to start, but too afraid of or afraid of failing? You got to start. Like, <laughs> no, you know, for real, you can't give up. Mm -hmm. And I know everybody say that. I, f I feel like everybody be like, "Don't give up, don't give up." Mm -hmm. Seriously though, it's like that that moment when you like. I ain't doing this shit. Everything is going bad for you. I'm telling you, like, I feel like everything was going down. Mm -hmm. But that's like that moment when it's like, how bad do you want it? No, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Fast. You going to give it up? What yeah. you going to do? Mm -hmm. And that's that pivotal moment for you. Mm -hmm. So don't give up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Young nigga shit versus some shit I've been through. What's something that you believed in as a young 17, 18 year old that you look at on now? Like, what was I thinking? Oh, you know, I used to drive places all the time, mm -hmm. like Atlanta, everywhere. Just me and my son, nothing. I, I ain't even had GPS on my phone back then. It was just like praying out. <laughs> Map quest. That shit is crazy to me now. Like, I've looked back at it like nobody knew where I would be going. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, just uh, uh, be prepared. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I, I, that's the only thing. That's the, I don't know why that came to my mind, but that yeah. was the first thing, like. I don't know the words I'm looking for for that, but mm -hmm. I feel like I would just when we're young, we're just more careless, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, for sure, for sure, for just sure. Just don't be too careless. Yeah, I drove from Dallas to Detroit with no insurance, that, um, expired plates mm, and uh see? expired uh see? no uh suspended license. Living life on the edge. <laughs> Living life on the edge. That was me too. Was like driving. I was I, in Detroit. You know how much insurance costs? Mm -hmm. I had, oh, yeah. Come on now. Yeah. I was young. I couldn't afford sure. that. Until no, you sure. get to 25. Yeah, when yeah. I got 25, it didn't change. Yeah, I'm mad about insurance now. Like, what the heck, man? Dang. 
I mean, if it was for my wife, I wouldn't be paying insurance at all. <laughs> for the birds. <laughs> now, um, towards the end, mm-hmm. we do this thing, a couple of little fun, you know, funny little things. Okay. Uh, I got this thing called too early, too late, or right on time. Mm-hmm. I asked you, you know, something you told me if it was too late, too early, right on time. Okay. Figuring out life. Because you figure out like too early, too late, or right on time. Right on time. All right. Moving out your parents' house. Right on time. First relationship. <laughs> Wait, what am I asking? Too late, too early, right on time. <laughs> right on time. Okay, starting, starting, uh, uh, being in, in the film industry, being an actress. Right on time. Find out Santa Claus wasn't real. <laughs> Santa never came to my house, so I didn't even know the nigga is sure. I, I, my mom always get me like that. I'm like, hey, mom, we ain't got no chimney. We uh, stay in the apartment building. Oh, he, he, he exists now. Yeah. He said stay in the apartment. Yeah, I'll stay in the apartment building. How you, like, what are you doing? He rang, he rang the doorbell. Like, oh, all right, bet. Um, sex. Too early. Mm-hmm. What was it? Um, leaving a messed up relationship. Mm, probably right on time. Okay. Now, I ain't going to ask you other questions because you got kids down here. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to do my top three. Mm-hmm. Give me <laughs> give me your top three mm-hmm. childhood crush. Celebrity childhood crush. Oh, God. Tyrese. Mm-hmm. Lorenz Tate. Mm-hmm. That was it. Yeah, One of the top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top, top two. two. Like, I almost got into a fight with a girl in yeah. middle school over Lorenz Tate. Hey, see aging backwards. Like, I don't know. I ain't, I, you need the secret. I'm watching Power looking at him and uh, my man Meth Man getting mad. Like, dang, these fools. Mm-hmm. <laughs> looking like they 12. <laughs> Met the man all strong and squalled up and <laughs> hey, whatever though. Shout out to y'all though. And that, that, that first episode of Power Book, you know, was kind of cold the other day. Uh, give me your top three moments in life. Oh, sheesh. Oh well, of course. <laughs> that's, that's easy. Mm-hmm. That's easy. See, she she should have ruled some things out. So since you didn't, I'm okay. gonna go yeah. when I had my kids for sure. So you know what I'm saying? That was three different times. So that's one. Mark? No, 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 no. Huh? Kids in one. Those are twins. They're, They're all twins. one. Nah. Kids is a is a package deal. I knew he was gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> so kids. <laughs> when I graduated college. For sure. That's definitely a good moment. For sure. And when I booked my first lead role. For sure. For sure. For sure. Give me your top three Detroit movies. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Plug Love. Mm-hmm. My fave. Classic. My fave. Classic. And because I'm not gonna pick all Moolah films. I would, mm-hmm. but I'm not. Classic. Dancing with the Devil. Okay. Is one. Okay. And my third one. Oh God, there's so many great movies. Why are you doing this to me? Mm-hmm. I would have to go with. Um, y'all know the name of the movie. Come on now. Uh, buffed up. I just said I would oh, name yeah. all the <laughs> movies now though. What's the movie with Tristan and Mean and Monroe in it? Oh, he was he was going crazy. He thumped her in the face. Scott. Yeah, Scott. Oh, what's the name? If I can't. If I can't. Scott was tripping. Those, I, those would be my my top three. For sure. Scott was tripping. I wanted to see it. When he said talk to me in lowercase letters, that was a, the best line I've ever heard in my life. See, because then there's another one, a wrong man. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Give me your top three underrated TV shows. Cause a, yeah, because you know everybody say Martin, Fresh Prince, Good Times, like the ones that don't get talked about, like those, like the Jamie Foxx of the world. Oh yeah, the well, Bernie Jamie Mac Fox show is the oh Bernie Mac is my fave. Oh yeah, for sure. So Bernie, but you don't think people you think those is underrated? It's not underrated. It just don't get talked about like how the top ones. You know, when you gotcha. say your top ones, you always immediately say Martin, Fresh oh, Prince. Oh, mine's the Wayne Brothers. I love. The Thank Wayans. you. Thank you. What the Wayne? This fool, oh, he, he said that was for pops. He said the only good thing about the Wayne brothers pops. You? Tell him, please tell him, please tell him by himself. So, you don't mess with the Wayans. So just think about the Wayans brothers minus pops. Would you really have watched that show? Yes, man. Yes, I like white chicks. I yeah, love the that's a classic. Brothers. I love the Wayans brothers. Like white they are classic. Just a classic. <laughs> I love Wayne okay. Brothers. The only, the only movie I didn't like was a Little Man. I didn't like Little Man. I didn't like Little Man. Yeah, either. Little Man was trash. I still watched it though. Yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Marlon, uh, my God, man. All okay. right, so you said Brain Mac Show, Wayne Brothers. Yeah, and Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. Yeah, Jamie Foxx is a classic for Jamie sure. Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Classic movie. Classic. Yeah. Give me your top three late night snacks. 
<laughs> cereal. What kind of cereal honeycomb. Though? Okay, okay. That's the trashiest cereal ever. <laughs> It's that latent taste. Yeah, okay. It's light. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, a little puff cereal, you know what I'm saying? It a little is. milk. That's a light, that's a light snack. It is, it is. All right. Uh, why are you trying to be all up in my business like that? But I would eat you know, a little bit of chocolate cake, mm -hmm. something like that. Or what is another? It's some Lay's. No, I ain't going to tell y'all. The sal, oh, the Lay's potato chips. For sure. I ain't going to Lay's, but a little <laughs> cheese dip in that boy. <laughs> Give me your top three go-to meals to prepare. Mm. Salmon and rice. Okay. Um, Spanish rice. Mm -hmm. And what else? Um, I don't know. We gotta ask some kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm yeah. always cooking. I cook every day, so I don't know. Oh shoot! Yeah, a round of applause for you. I wish I had to clap the uh, little buttons, y'all. <laughs> uh, okay. And um, the last one I will have to say is, hmm. Hmm. Top three actresses. Your favorite. Why are you doing that to me? Okay, hey, because we got to. My top three actresses. Okay, I'm gonna do local. Well, how, how are you? Anywhere. Mm -hmm. I already told Debbie. I, I I'm so mad at myself that I can't think of her last name. Mm -hmm. Abdo something. Okay. She's my number one right now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Debbie Spencer. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're making me okay. Um, I'm gonna go with Elizabeth Fox. Okay, okay, Elizabeth Fox. I'll, I'll still waiting on you too. <laughs> uh, no, it was, hey, for this to be your first interview, mm -hmm. hey, it was cool. You sure? Yeah, you talked enough. We had a good conversation, good dialogue. You know, saying got to know about you instead. You know what I'm saying? You got to see Detroit at 17 and change your life for the better. You did. You know what I'm saying? But that's no, it was dope. Anything you want to leave the people with message-wise as far as like some motivation words? Well, since we was talking about, you know, somebody out here who start wants to be in acting or anything, like mm -hmm. the first thing you gotta do is start. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you can get into some classes or workshops, whatever, like start mm -hmm. and, you know, try to do it right. Yeah, you know, get all as much information as you need. It's competition out here, so just be ready. Yeah, and like I said, don't give up. For sure, for sure. And mm -hmm. where can they follow you at as far as social media and all that stuff? I'm on Instagram, Tamia underscore Janae. That's T A M I A underscore G E N I A. Mm -hmm. That's about it. I mean, I got it's like linked to my Facebook. I don't. I'm not really much on Facebook, but mm -hmm. I'm about to start being on Facebook. For sure, that's for sure, about for sure. it. And um, when your next album coming out? <laughs> Lovely T gonna be Lovely dropping. Yeah, a little, a little EP and stuff, man. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. But now I appreciate you coming on the show. No, appreciate you. You know, spending your Sunday. You know, saying with us for a little bit. You know, what I'm saying talking to us and stuff. And um, oh, last thing, mm -hmm. nobody have yet to help me with this, but if you could see somebody on the podcast mm -hmm. that you know that you could help me out with, who would you want to see on the show? Oh, so many people. Let's I had Thomas already. You had Thomas. Mm, I had a uh, uh, Scott. You ain't had Car. Car. Carla. Nope. Gotta have Carla on the show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So see her whole Instagram name. So dope. <laughs> what is? I don't know what Carla. Okay. Is, uh, I think it's Kill Carla. Okay. Okay. Bad. K I L L. So uh, you heard it here. K R L A. Yep. Dope. So to me, it's gonna She's help us. One get... of the dopest people here in Detroit. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Anybody ever tell me tell you that you got an R and B name like Tamia Janae? Like it's like coming to the stage, Tamia Janae. Like. <laughs> but no, I appreciate you coming on the show, episode two hundred. My producer episode. back there just put his uh, order in for Little Caesars. <laughs> he back there. He like. <laughs> he got them three meats. <laughs> Right there. He want all the meats on his face. <laughs> I said, a oh, little orange, Lord. <laughs> he like, oh, yeah, they about to end it. Order. I see him putting the order in, too. That's funny. I'm dead. Hey, put me in three minutes. <laughs> I'm dead. But no, shout out to you. And like I said, episode 200. Yeah. To me and Janae. Yes. Make sure y'all go watch our movies. Please. Make sure y'all support, Please. show love to all the Detroit actresses and actresses mm -hmm. and stuff like that, man. And um, yeah, support me, the best podcast in the city. Please. Uh, shout out to our kids for uh, beat my team because I am the one of the best coaches in the city. It didn't look like it that day because my, okay. my kids is on bull crap. And salute to them. And um, 
like I said, uh, hope y'all next four years in high school be good. A hoop, ball out, all that good stuff. This is me. You know what I'm saying? The, the best ever. The for best. Shout out to everybody podcast. Yeah, for sure. Yes, and thank y'all for having me. For sure, for sure. We out here. Hey, oh, yeah. Mailman, third mailman coming soon. Mark. <laughs> we out.